Hey church family, my name is Annie Newfeld. I'm the pastor of small groups here at Lake Avenue Church and this is your weekly small groups video. This past weekend, Pastor Jeff Matisich preached on John 17 verses 11 and 20 through 23, this familiar passage on unity. And in this passage, Jesus prays for you and me. Listen to what he says. He prays that all of them, that all of us, may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Church family, if we want to tell the world about a loving God, it begins with us loving one another. It begins with us living in unity. Pastor Jeff went on to talk about what unity is not and what unity is. He said, unity is not natural. Um, it's not going to be easy for us because sin seeks to separate and divide and to disconnect us from ourselves, from God, from one another. And so unity is going to require a work of the Holy Spirit. Also, unity is not a generic call for people to become passionless and silence. Unity is not the same thing as uniformity. It's not some call for us all to be the same and just to let go of our distinctions and unique aspects. Uh, it's not theoretical. It's not benign. On the other hand, unity is. Unity involves a mix of relationships that are built on mutual love. And so that means that love, that unity involves forgiveness. It, unity demands forgiveness. We can't obsess over one another's mistakes, failings, shortcomings. Pastor Jeff quoted Brian Stevenson in saying, each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. So unity means that we pursue healing. Also, unity involves grace. It involves us respecting one another and extending grace to one another instead of engaging in this cancel culture that's so uh, prominent in our world. We invite one another to be sanctified, but we don't cancel each other. Uh, unity involves empathy. It involves sitting with people, um, not being afraid of the mess, not telling someone that they shouldn't be sad or that they shouldn't be happy, but actually sitting with someone and feeling what they feel. And last, unity involves restorative church discipline, truth-telling, loving people enough to hold them accountable to God's law and God's command. That list is complicated. Unity is complicated. It isn't easy, and yet it is God's command for us, and it's what He's inviting us to do in order to show the world uh, uh, his love. So here's our question for this week. Pastor Jeff said that unity involves forgiveness, grace, empathy, and restorative discipline. In which of these areas do you need to grow in order to really pursue oneness with your brothers and sisters in Christ? A lot of times when we talk about unity, we say, well, that's all well and good, and we'll, but we're not gonna experience unity until those people change. When they change, then they can come and get unified with me. That's not how God works. How is God inviting you to change this week in order to experience oneness with your brothers and sisters in Christ? So church family, may you experience union with the triune God this week. May you experience a sense of belonging to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may you then seek oneness, seek that same sense of belonging with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Go in peace.